Hey class, welcome back. A long time no see. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a short video to finish up chapter 3, section 2, where we were talking about the liveliness of uh, bouncy balls and um, tennis balls and other things as they are dropped from a certain height and only return to a lesser height as a result of their coefficient of restitution. Sorry if you hear some uh, funny noises in the background. I'm actually recording this in my wife's office. Uh, and she's packing some of her products to ship to clients. So I think that's some of her wrapping paper. Anyway, so uh, just a quick reminder, homework eight and nine are both due on Monday. Uh, so a couple quick review questions to make sure you guys understood the material we talked about on Wednesday, all right? First of all, here we're given a problem statement where you have a ball, its energy ratio is 0 0.5. If you dropped it from a certain height onto a rigid floor, okay, how high will it bounce back relative to its original starting point? So again, if I got my trusty tennis ball here, if I drop it, will it bounce back to 100% of its height, 50% or about 25? Again, energy ratio 0.5. What do you think? Ready? Make a guess. Okay. Hopefully you said answer B because it would be 50% of the height, right? Because again, energy ratio, I'm going to put this on the board to just drive home the concept here. So energy ratio. Again, is the rebound energy divided by the collision energy that you started with. So if we think of this in terms of gravitational potential energy, this would be mgh final, that's a F, divided by mgh initial. And so if you cancel out the m and the g there, your energy ratio, as we saw in class, would be equal to your final height divided by your original height. So if your energy ratio is 0.5, then your final height would be 0.5 or half or 50% of the original. Cool. All right. So next question. Now, if you have a ball and its coefficient of restitution is 0.5 and you dropped it onto a rigid floor, how high would it bounce relative to its original height? Again, take a vote, make a guess, 25%, 50%, or 100%. So the correct answer, I think uh, my wife is messing with us, but uh, the correct answer is 25%, right? Because again, if you remember the energy ratio is just equal to the coefficient of restitution squared or taking the square root of both sides, the coefficient of restitution. Maybe I should make this bigger. Coefficient of restitution. Okay, yeah, she's just messing with us. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. She loves physics too, don't worry. The coefficient of restitution is the square root of the energy ratio. So if our coefficient of restitution is 0.5, if we were to square that like we saw originally, we would get 0.5 squared is 0.25, which is what your energy ratio is. So it would be 25% of the height as we saw in the last example. Okay, so... Moving on to the second question that we never even got to in class today. We did some demonstrations with it, but we didn't discuss it. So why does the floor surface affect the bounce? So we talked about how different types of balls can bounce to different heights. We saw that in the demonstrations in class today. But why does the surface affect things as well? Well, that's because just like the ball has the capability of deforming and returning elastic potential energy, the floor can as well. So the floor can actually dent just a little bit. Again, think of the trampoline example we talked about. The floor can deform, store elastic potential energy, and then return it. Okay. So if you have a soft, lively floor similar to a trampoline, it can really store and return a lot of energy. Can you think of other examples, other things that are good at storing and returning energy? Maybe a bouncy castle. One time my wife and I got kicked out of a bouncy castle. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> Anyway, just to show you what this, yeah, it does sound weird. Okay, so my wife wants me to explain. We got kicked out of, a, we were at, where was that place called? Safari Sam's up in Sherwood um, with some friends. And they're like, hey, we can go into the little bouncy house they have there. And so there, we went with them. We're like, okay, sounds good. Well, it turns out the bouncy house has like a maximum height. You have to be like four and a half feet or less. So basically you have to be a kid. And so we were bouncing around in there as adults, not realizing that we were too old. There weren't any kids around, so we weren't like hurting anybody or anything. But yeah, 
we got kicked out. It was pretty funny. Not of the whole place. We got to go eat the rest of our pizza, but we did get kicked out of the bouncy castle. Anyway, so to draw a picture similar to what we were just talking about here, let me get my trusty eraser. It's actually just a paper towel. Anyway, so if you have a ball and you drop it on a rigid surface that doesn't move at all as the ball hits, the ball will deform and flatten as we saw in the video with the tennis ball. Um, and the surface remains completely hard if you're talking about something like a concrete floor. But if you have a very lively surface, something that's much more bouncy, as the ball hits, the surface, okay, the surface will deform as well as having the ball deform. And so both things are able to store and then return potential energy. And so when the ball bounces back up, it will be able to have more of its original energy than it would otherwise have. Again, this is why trampolines are so much fun. Part of why. So, next question. Now, I want to talk about the situation where your ball and the thing it's impacting are both moving. Okay, so this is where we think about, especially in sports, like if you are hitting a baseball, the baseball's coming at you at maybe 80 miles an hour, and then you're hitting it with a bat that's also swinging at high speeds. When that's happening, how can you determine what the coefficient of restitution is or what the final velocity of the ball coming off the bat is and so on. So the question here says, when a baseball bounces from a moving bat, what is the final speed of the baseball? So your options are, is it between the initial speeds of the bat and the ball? So like an average of the two or something? Is it equal to just however fast the ball starts at? Can it exceed the initial speed of the ball or the bat? Or is it less than the initial speed of either object because of coefficient restitution. What do you think? This is a little bit of a trickier one. But those of you who have played sports may know that it can actually be faster than either the speed of the ball or the bat. It's not uncommon that baseballs come off of the bats much faster than the pitcher throws them. So why is that? We said in class coefficient of restitution is always less than one. So how can something have a speed larger than what it started with? Well, it's because it's moving or being hit by a moving object. So we need to think about the collision speed differently when we talk about both objects moving. All right, so how can the moving bat drive a ball forward? Well, it's moving forward and hitting the ball, and it continues to move forward, and so the ball is bouncing off of the bat. And so we, what we need to be thinking about here, again, if you have a ball bouncing off a stationary object, it's going to come off the stationary object with its rebound speed. But if now the ball and the object are both moving, this rebound speed is how fast it comes off of my hand. So if my hand's moving at 5 meters per second and the rebound speed is 10 meters per second, the ball will bounce off relative to the ground at 15 meters per second because it's coming off of my moving hand at 10 meters per second, which is really important to understand. Okay, so now what you need to think of when you think of collision speed, it's not just how fast the ball is moving, but it's how fast the two objects approach one another. And the rebound speed is how far the two objects or how fast the two objects move away from one another. So again, if my hand is moving, the rebound speed is how fast it moves away from my hand afterwards. So it's the speed of the two added together. So just to give you an example, imagine two cars are traveling towards one another. One's going at 60 miles an hour, the other at 50 miles an hour. All right. If there's a pedestrian standing on the side, or let's say it's Gus, my dog, okay, he's standing on the side watching these two cars, okay, hoping that a squirrel shows up. Anyway, if the two cars were to collide, what would their collision speed be? Well, as you guessed, probably, answer A. It's the sum of the two. They're moving towards each other, Right? Their collision when they collide, since they're moving towards each other, is the sum of their individual speeds. Oh, interesting. So let's take this and apply it to an example. We're going to try to figure out how fast this ball is going to bounce off of this bat. All right? So let's, to make the numbers easy, let's say the pitcher throws the ball at 100 kilometers an hour, and the bat is also being swung towards the ball at 100 kilometers an hour. First of all, what's the collision speed? You guessed it, 200 kilometers an hour. Next, then, if we assume that the coefficient of restitution is 0.55 between the ball and the bat, what is the speed at which the ball 
comes off the bat. And then I'll ask you also, what is the overall final speed of the ball relative to the ground? So pause this for a second and try to figure this one out. Again, I give you the coefficient of restitution, you know the collision speed. I want you to tell me, in the end, how fast the ball is moving relative to the ground. How fast is it moving back towards the pitcher? How much time does the pitcher have to react? Pause it and give it a go. Did you pause it and try it? Skeptical. Okay. Apparently I need a drink of water first. So let's give this a go. Our collision speed is 200, right? We know coefficient of restitution equals the rebound speed divided by the collision speed. So if we want to solve for the rebound speed, we have to multiply both sides by the collision speed. So our rebound speed is the coefficient of restitution multiplied by the collision speed, as you see here. So we'll take the 0.55 coefficient of restitution, multiply it by the 200 kilometers per hour, and we see that the rebound speed is 110 kilometers per hour. Now, is that box worthy? End of story. See you later. No, right? Because that is just how fast it's coming off of the bat. That's the rebound speed. But it's rebounding off of a moving object. The person who's swinging is probably going to follow through. The bat keeps moving after they hit the ball, right? So since the bat was moving at 100 kilometers an hour, if we assume it maintains approximately a constant speed through the impact, then the final speed of the ball back towards the pitcher is 210 kilometers an hour. So it's moving back towards the pitcher faster than the ball started, faster than the bat started, and even faster than your collision speed since it's moving off of or bouncing off of a moving object. So the final speed back towards the pitcher is 210 kilometers per hour. So the last question, just to kind of recap some of these things, make sure you guys understand before we wrap things up. It tells us that you have a bouncy or lively ball, okay? and it bounces higher from a rigid surface than an immovable surface, or sorry, a rigid immovable surface than a dead ball does. So if you remember, I had those two bouncy balls, actually six of them, but there's one that's bouncy and one that's not, right? I made you guys guess and it felt kind of similar. Why is it that the bouncy one bounced higher than the other one? What was the difference? Vote for your best answer, what do you think? A, B, C, or D? Boom. As you guessed, C is the correct answer. It did a better job of returning collision energy to rebound energy. It's able to store and return the energy, not allowing as much to be wasted as thermal energy. All right, so that wraps up Chapter 3, Section 2. I hope you guys have a box-worthy weekend. Let me know if you have any questions on the homework. And other than that, we'll start Chapter 3, Section 3 on Monday. So make sure you're keeping up with reading. Have a box-worthy day.